I'm Chris Hopkins. You know, being thankful it ain't going out of style. Praising God never goes out of style. Worshiping God is not just something that's just so church related. It's an everyday deal. Getting your praise on, it's an everyday deal. That's what this program is about. As we go into the world infamous Resonate Church here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, all I can say is our senior lead pastor, Brian Adams, is standing by. Yeah, I am a little excited, as you can tell inside my voice. Because when God is just so good, you better not be sitting down. You better be getting, your, you better be getting yourself up and praising Him. Tonight, we discuss gratitude of the redeemed. Pastor, I'm ready for this one. Let's go. Let's go resonate. We, just, we want you just to relax and allow God to help you because he's not done. Church is acting like it's done, but I say God ain't done. Uh, so listen, we've been doing a couple of things lately, and kind of going to square, take a different direction this morning, not a whole lot, but we want to teach this morning on a couple of things. We want to teach this morning on the gratitude of the redeemed. Everyone say redeemed. To be, be, to be redeemed means that you've been brought back to the original state. It's a beautiful thing. We would say that today in the church would be that we are brought back to the original state, and then people are like, well, it's the original state when I was with God. Yes, when you die and you get to heaven, you're back to the original state when he created you in the secret spot. But while you're still on earth, what he's wanting to do is he wants to redeem you, take you back to the spot where Adam walked with him in the cool of the garden. Where you didn't, there was no thistles, there were no heartaches, there was nothing. It's just a conversation with a man and his God. Come on. That's where he wants you out. You're going to say, how can I do that with all the chaos and everything that's going on? You can. You can still walk and talk with God. Some, some study that when they say, you know, we had the Garden of Eden, and it was beautiful. And we know when we read that, we never hear no mention of thorns or nothing until after Adam's sin. Come on. Now, I'm gonna, I want to challenge you real quick. It never says that after Adam done that, that all of a sudden there was new things created and God made new things. So that means the thorns and the thistles and everything else was already there. It just meant when he was walking with God, they were beautiful. They wasn't something that hurt them. That teaches us that sometimes when we're going through the trials of life or the things that are difficult, it ain't that God's trying to hurt you or ugliness is all around you. He's trying to teach you that the closest you walk to me, or the closer you walk to me, the more beautiful the thorns and the disappointments are. Because you don't notice them when you're focusing on God. That's the key. So we want to talk about gratitude. Now gratitude is this. Gratitude is being thankful. But in such a way that you're happy about it, you're overflowing about it, and you're showing the gratitude. Hello, you with me? So when we talk about the grat gratitude of the redeemed, I want to go to Psalms 107 because there's a perfect picture painted here of four different types of failures. With one way in each failure that they became successful in God taking care of them and getting them out of their mess. And once they did that, you'll find out they, were, they had gratitude in praising God. Gratitude excited happy hello so i'm going to say something real quick just to kind of rock your boat a little bit i'm not saying this morning that you don't believe in god i'm not saying that you're not saved i'm not saying that you don't believe in god to get you out of it i'm just saying that you've been in so many messes all through your life that 
you know God to do it, but you're not thankful for it. You expect God to get you out of your mess because he's God and he does it, but you don't want to thank him or love him or shout about it or be praiseful. Hello. And we find this happens in the book of Psalms 107. Now, the writer here does something just awesome. He breaks down four different stories, four different ways. And then at the key point, he always talks about how they were thankful and they were worshipful and they showed gratitude. So there's the key, there's your nugget, that's where we're heading. But I want to walk there with you for a second. Sometimes we can't thank God or be thankful the way we should because our mind is just completely wore out. Hey, come on. We talked about that the last two Sundays, how our minds have to be renewed. And we don't renew them, but it has to be renewed. The problem that's in the house this morning with many of us is we've been through so much, it ain't that we don't believe in God, it's this, our minds are just wore out. Can I tell you it this way so you understand? They're tired. See, you can be in good physical shape, but if your mind gets tired, you're tired. You'll get where you're emotional wreck. You'll get where you just can't see how nothing's going to happen. Where, where you at, church? You're going to say you're going to beat me up like you did last Sunday? Probably, but it'll be all right. It'll be, get over it. Your mind already playing games on you. This could be a good sermon or a bad sermon. It's just up to you how your mind takes it. So I want to do this this morning. And I want you to get that right off the bat with Psalms 107. As you stand, we're going to stand for the reading of the first scripture. Then we're going to pray. I want you to get this thought this morning. I'm going to show you four different stories in one chapter that has, a, every one of us has had a version of this story. There's four stories here that has plagued every one of us at some point in time in our lives. The cool thing about this, before I even start, is that guy got him out of that mess every time. The uncool thing is, as soon as he got him out of one mess, he went right back into another mess. I'm going to show you the key of why. And it's because they stopped, thankful, stopped being thankful and stopped praising God. They were tired in their mind. They were excited at the moment where they got breakthrough. Praised Him, worshipped Him. But as soon as they got away from His presence, they got tired, doubted, and walked into another storm or walked into another famine. It ain't that they didn't believe in God. It ain't that they didn't think he would do it. It's just that their mind wouldn't allow because they were too fatigued. Now before I read this scripture, let's be honest. How many of you this morning are fatigued in your mind? You said you didn't get a very good response, Pastor. You're missing it. I got a lot of mumbles. I'm saying that's the first sign. That when you're so fatigued you can't even be honest because pride is too strong or you just don't want to admit it. Listen, I'm not saying, I'm going to say it this way and I'm going to be harsh for a minute. I'm not saying you're slow or you're mental or retarded. I'm not doing that. Even the best of us gets tired. If you ever notice, he tells us that we got to renew our mind. Nothing but our mind. Meditate means your mind. Keep your mind on God all the time. Hello. It happens. But today could be the difference maker in your life. If you can learn that them moments might come, but when they come, that's when you take a break and you just show some gratitude about how great he is. And praise him like you should. Hey, is that going to change the stupidity and some of the things that's happened, some of the losses or some of the circumstances you're in? No, because that's past. Past is past. You can't change past. Hello? But it can be, I can make it change the way that it affects you in the future. You can have a better life tomorrow. You can have a little more step. Come on. A little more hop in your step. A little more prayer life. Hello. Things in the past are... So why are you allowing them to affect your future? Hello. We're teaching them young over here. He's gurgling milk in the Holy Ghost. Come on. I'm joking. You're saying, why did you do that that last minute? Some of you got serious on me for a little bit. The Lord told me this morning, I'm going to have to make sure that I don't let your minds wander too far because this is the sermon that's changing your life. Listen, stuff's happened. you got to accept it. Move on. With gratitude. Look at your neighbor and say, move on. And then smile and say, with gratitude. 
I know it was fake. But sometimes you got to take it how you get it. Uh -huh. Psalms 107, verse 1. Oh, I love this. Oh, oh. That's, that's like how I text people. Some of you that I text regularly, you're like, that's pastor. He don't do it right. Come on. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is and his mercy. We all know this. This ain't nothing new, right? But I want you to get this. Now, listen, I'm a, I'm a, I want you to learn how to read. That sounded really like you're dumb or something. I didn't mean it that way. Have fun when you're reading it. Why did he put that big O there? He put that big O there because he's like, oh! You got to give thanks to the Lord. Hello? For he is, for God is, he's what? So that mess you're going through ain't of God. God is, he is, oh, he, I want to sing, but I can't sing. He's good. All right? Here we go. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is and his endureth. Come on, it says, God's mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. It's there. It's always there. We just can't sit sometimes. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the bread of life which broke. Father, we thank you for the awesome presence that's in the house. We thank you for this being the beginning. This is our now moment. This is when everything changes. This is when everything starts new. This is the way that we forget about the past hurts, forget about the mistakes, forget about all the disappointments and loss and everything that we have faced. This is the now moment, Lord, that we're going to give you thanks, that we're going to move forward, that we're going to be thankful, that we're going to survive knowing that you got us to a new plateau. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Church says, amen. amen. See, I want you to get this here for a second, and I want you to understand. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I, and I love that because he is good. Hello. Now, listen, I got I to gotta hit a couple of you before I even go any farther. Some of you is going to be like, if he's so good, why do you allow this to happen? If he's so good, why did this happen? Okay, let me just reverse that. Uh, if you believe so much, then why did you do it? Why are you pinning it on God not being good when you have free will to do what you want and you just chose to do your thing and not God's thing? So first off, stop blaming God for your, uh, oh, Lord, don't let me say that, but here we go. Stop blaming God for your uh, stupidity. Stop blaming God. I, I, I tried to find another word, but God said, no, you're going to do it. Stop blaming God for your decision. Stop blaming God for what you know that you should. Come on, listen. It's like someone that's a druggie. You know not to go get high because God's really ain't for you to get high. So how are you going to say, oh, God, why did you tempt me when you're the one that drove over to that house? The guy's like, I didn't drive you. You didn't get caught up in the spirit. Now I landed you there. Come on. Listen, so what we need to understand is God is good. And listen, in Romans 8 and 20, for all things work for the good in other words works for God for those who love him according to his purpose so we got to get this out of our head God didn't do none of this to you he gave you free will and since he gave you a choice you just made a bad one it happens it ain't God's fault I know you would like to blame the big man upstairs but he loved you so much instead of forcing you to love him he's like hey I'll give you I'll give you free will you love me you walk my way and everything's fine Right? He still loves you so much that he don't even write it in the Bible once that you can't blame him for nothing. So listen, that's a good guy. That's a good God. Because we like to blame it on everybody but ourselves. Okay. So listen, so the mess that you're in ain't God's fault. It's your fault. Someone asked me the other day, you think God let me go through this so he'll get my attention? I think you let yourself go through that and now God's got your attention. There's a difference. So let's think about this for a second. Let's look at some of this. I want you to understand where the children of Israel are at this moment. They're right where you are, okay? Listen, God continuously rescued Israel from their bondages. Not this one bondage. If you really get to study it on the children of Israel, they had one bondage after another bondage. Come on, somebody. How many of you feel that way? It's like I get over one thing and something else comes about. Huh? All right, that's what the children of Israel are doing. They got one bondage, God delivers them, and then all of a sudden, oh, here, let me do it this way. They were, you know, slaves for the Egyptians. What happened? God gave them the Canaan. Come on, somebody. Later, he, you know, even saved them again from being captive with the Babylonians. They went from being slaves, then they became captives. What, what did God do? He took care of them again. 
Now, see, you find out something when you read Psalms 107 here. You find out that the writer, he realizes who God really is. You've got to understand this. The psalmist realized and, and wrote out that God is the Redeemer. Everyone would say he's my Redeemer. Not only that, but in Psalms 107, you find out that he writes him in such a way that he's your rescuer. Come on. Not only that, he's your Savior. Now, listen, I want you to get that. That means that God is everything that you need to get out of your mess. Hello, he's everything, I said everything that you, the reason you're still struggling in some areas or having difficulties is because you ain't allowed God to rescue you yet, you ain't allowed him to redeem you yet. Oh, I believe, yeah, great you believe, but you don't really believe. Hello. But you got to understand something. When we get to Jesus which is God in the flesh, it changes. Not only is he our redeemer, not only is he our rescuer, but he's our savior. Now, I love that, not because it's titling him into three, it's not really doing that. What he's saying is, as the relationship that man has had with God, God keeps involving. I've become a redeemer. I've become, Nick, come on, somebody. I've become everything that you need. And when he got down to Jesus, he said, you know what? I'm going to give it one word. I'm going to be your savior. Savior goes over every mess that you can be in. I'm going to save you from yourself. I'm going to save you from this sin. I'm going to save you from that heartache. I'm just going to save you. Some of you are forgetting what it means to be redeemed. Some of you like being rescued because you have that mindset that he'll always rescue me. God's like, forget it. I didn't rescue you just to come back and rescue you again. So let me just be your savior that I can save you. Now, I want, I want you to understand. He'll save you from your sickness. He'll save you from sin, right? But the main thing that we need God to save us from is ourselves. Ourselves. Because we don't think we're worthy, right? We don't think we're good enough. We don't think he'll ever forgive us. And we get all this thinking, although we're Christians and know the word of God says he'll forgive you, he still loves you, but our mind tells us he can't do nothing for us. Or he won't love me no more, I went too far. What makes you think you went too far? You should have been thinking about how far you were going when you chose the will to do what you wanted. But he still loves you. He still cares. Are you with me? So then all of a sudden we get to Psalms 107, and I want you to get, most people call this the gratitude chapter. It's the gratitude of the salvation of God. Gratitude. See, the writer here has an experience. He's experienced rendition. He's experienced God being a Savior. He's experienced God as the Redeemer. He had an experience. So he wanted to express his gratitude. Everyone say express. Most of us don't ever express our gratitude. Now, let me back up because some of you are going to do this. I got an extra check in the mail and I gave God gratitude. Yeah. You let every one of us know that you got a bonus. But you ain't never told us that God healed you from your broken heart. You're good at doing something that makes you look like you stand better than everyone else and God, God's gave you highly favor. But where's the gratitude that he gave you breath this morning? Where's the gratitude that the family's still together? Where's the gratitude that he, come on somebody, where's that gratitude? See, the writer here is trying to tell us that every time we lose our gratitude for God, we get right back into a mess. We're quick to praise him when it looks great and we can be above everyone else. But where's the gratitude that God got me through another day of work without killing somebody? Got me through another day of work without being fired. The gratitude that, hey, I got my kid through school and McKenna didn't paddle him. Come on. Where's that gratitude? Where's the gratitude that they're just here? Hello. You know, most of us don't want to be here. We got some in the house that's just tired of living. I'm not saying you're suicidal. It's hit a couple of you. But most of you are just like, oh, I'm just so tired. All this. Where's your gratitude for life? There's people in the other hospitals all around of COVID or cancer, whatever the mess is nowadays, that's dying that wish they just had another moment like you, but you can't thank God for what you have. You want a new job, but you can't be grateful or have any gratitude about the job that you're in, but then you don't understand why you're not getting that $10 raise. Because you're not thankful and you don't have no gratitude with making what you make. Or maybe that is not thankful enough to give your tithes out of what you make. Now, I'm not preaching on tithes. I'm going to go over here because that's offensive to some of you. But maybe that's the problem. I mean, that's the tithe part. Erase that. Woo. 
But maybe the problem is God's got you right where he wants you because he can't move you forward until you're grateful with what you got. You're not praising God for your $10 or $13 hour our pay and then you want to know why he ain't gave you 20 God's like well you're cranky with what I gave you why would I make someone be even more cranky with more where's your thankfulness that you got food on the table man I was so thankful the other day let me tell you how thankful I like cereal at weird hours of the night made me a big old bowl of cereal got that jug of milk out and it looked empty but it reminded me of a story where a woman had a little oil. And I was like, Lord, let me have enough for my cereal. And the Lord said, I'll give you just enough. And it covered my honey frosted oats just right. Oh, come on. But I gave him thanks. I was like, thank you, Lord, for not letting me go to the store. That I had just enough. You think I'm playing. See, if you get where you thank God over the little silly things like that, then you get out of the problem that you have thanking him for the big thing. So think about this for a minute. I don't want to get to my sermon, but what I'm getting at is our biggest problem with moving forward with God is we're not thankful for where we are. We want a pastor someday, but we're not thankful for being the janitor. We want to move and be a bishop one day, but we ain't thankful for being an assistant. I'm not picking on mine. I'm doing that because it makes some of you feel better. Hello. We knocking where we're living. And we're not thankful for God gave us a roof over our house. It ain't the place I want. I don't like how it is. God's like, well, start thanking me for it, and then I'll see that you deserve a new one. We'll bash everything instead of being thankful that we have it. Hello. I hate this car. I don't like this car. It's always giving me problems. I want this. I don't want that. And God's like, I just want you to be thankful. Because it gets you to work at the same job you're not thankful for. That buys you the same groceries that you're not thankful for. And I'm always somehow providing that you have light, water, electric, but you ain't thankful for it. And now your mind's so cloudy, you don't know if I really love you or not but I'm giving all your basic needs and I didn't say I'd give you a mansion until you get to heaven. I just said that I supply all your needs and you're not thankful for it. And then why would I give you more if you're not thankful for it? So let's get to the sermon. We find out that in Psalms 107 verses 4 through 9, we find out here all of a sudden that them verses, them 5 or 6, whatever it is, 4 through 9 is talking about the lost pilgrims. I'm not talking about the ones that found the new land. I'm not talking about Indians or the ones that had Thanksgiving. I'm talking about pilgrims and men and just lost people. Are you hearing me? Hey, check this out. It starts like this. It says that they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way and they found no city to dwell in. Now listen, think about this for a minute. Five says they were hungry, thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. All right, hello, hello, listen, they were walking in wilderness. In other words, you're thinking of desert. They're walking around, can't find no settlement. Can we do it different? Can't find no way home. Can't find no comfort in their mind. They're just walking around and everything's chaotic. Don't know where they're going to eat, don't know what they're going to do. Can't fit into a society because there's no society. And they're just walking. They're just wondering. They're the lost pilgrims there. But you find out in 6, and I'm going to do it this way, all of a sudden when they realized that there was no escape, that there was no help, all of a sudden it says, then they cried out to the Lord in their what? In their what? And he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go into a city. Come on. Who the man would praise God for his goodness, for his wonderful works. For the children of man. For he what? Satisfieth the longing soul and filleth their what? Not their bellies, but their soul. Now I want to talk about this for a minute. Can we talk about terror? All of a sudden, here they are. They're terrified because they're lost. 
they're terrified because they don't know what's going on. Everything seems like it's wrong and nothing seems right. They're seeing, what do you call them things like in the desert? Mirages where it looks like something, but it ain't. Yeah, whatever. That's it. They're seeing a lie and they're being damned. Oh, that's even better. They're seeing that there might be a way of escape, but when they get there, it was nothing but an illusion in their mind. Can I talk to you lost pilgrims this morning? Can I talk to some of you that in your mindset feel lost? Like no one loves you and you're all alone? That it feels like everyone else is moving in relationships or moving in their life and you're just getting forgot about? To the point you're more worried about people being around you that you don't even realize you're not even asking God to stay around you. Some of you that feel like you're so lost in your mind that you're just damned and nothing's really ever going to change. Because you're just out there. A lost problem in your mindset that believes that you're a child of God, but at the same time you don't understand why you're lost. Is that you this morning? That you that's just wondering in your mindset, trying to figure out what's going on? Hello. See, there's something good here. I want you to get this. This picture betrays a couple of travelers in the pitless sun of the desert. You ever thought about that? Hot, sweaty, aggravated. When you get hot and sweaty, you don't matter what's going on. Everything aggravates you. If that's you, no matter what's going on, you could, you, you, you could, someone could be buying your dinner and you can't be happy about it. Is that you? Is that you? See, that's where they were. God promised to get them out of the slavery, but they didn't realize that meant they might have to go through some hard times. But going through hard times is still better than being a slave. Can I talk to you for a second? You lost program. You're gripping about where God's taking you. It feels like you're wondering and you're all alone, but you forgot that he got you off the addiction. You forgot that he got you out of an abusive relationship. You forgot that he delivered you. You forgot that he put you on a new ground. You forgot that he took you out of slavery, but you're now you're just griping because they don't know what direction to go. That's where they were. These lost pilgrims forgot that they were slaves. They forgot the mess that they were in. They just thought, God's going to make everything better instantly. And he would if they would have been thankful. You'd have found out by reading this that these lost programs are just wondering. They're not praising God. They're not saying, you, you even study this when they get out of Egypt. After a while, they stopped praising. They even started saying, it had been better for us to stay slaves. What in the world? How? Because after a while, our mindset gets where we ain't thankful for what God's got us out of. And then we start believing, ah, no one loves me. I'm no good. I can't make it. Everyone's going better. Everyone's moving on but me. I'm, I'm so alone. You could be in a room full of people and be lost. I'm talking to you about five of you this morning. And that's where the children of Israel, this is where they're at. They're just wondering. And the whole time they're wondering, they're not being thankful for where God takes them. Now, I want to hit a high point. You find out here, all of a sudden, that in the middle of their trouble, hello, I said, in the middle of the trouble, they begin to cry out. Verse 6. They cried out unto the Lord in their... That means that they wasn't worshiping God before it happened. It don't mean they were even talking to God or praying or seeking Him before it happened. But it means that they're just like most of us, that when the trouble hit, they begin to pray. When the trouble hit, they begin, God, can you get me out of it? God, I'm lost and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make it. I don't know where I'm going to go. But that ain't being thankful. That's totally opposite. But God is so faithful, what's he do? He delivers it. He's like, you know what? I'm going to give you food. I'm going to give you water. I'm going to give you all this. But at the end of the, if you get down to the end of the verse, you get around 9 or the last verse, you find out all of a sudden he didn't say that they ate and they were full. They thirst for they wouldn't be thirsty in their physical. He says he done it for their hungry, longing soul. Can I teach? In other words, they thought they were lost and hungry in the physical, that they needed more items. That they needed this and they needed that. When really, really what they needed was they just needed something to fill their soul. They just needed to fill God's love again. They needed to be hungry in God's word again. 
Can I pin it on you real quick? In other words, you're trying to tell God, I need to be around more people. I need people to hear me. I need this and I need that. When God's saying, no, what you think you're hungry for ain't what you're hungry for. What you're hungry for is a relationship with me. And you start being thankful that I hear you, that I love you, and then you'll get everything you need. Hello. I'll break it down this way. In the shape that you're in, you've told five different people, but you're not really prayed to God in faith knowing he's going to deliver you or you wouldn't have gossiped to five other people. Where you at? So think about this. They're looking at what they need physically, and God's like, you're not even worried about what you need spiritually. Is that you? You lost Prugel? Did she think you need more money, more house, people to love you, people to be around you, people to hear you, that you're not thankful that you have a God that does all that for you, a God that even hears you and you're not even talking to him. But here we go. He delivers them. Hello? In other words, there's hope and help for the lost. Are you with me? In other words, when they cried, Lord, the direction came. Think about this for a second. If you're in that mess of your mind, feeling lost and you don't know what to do, stop with all the other stuff. And just start being thankful. Just start talking to God. Then what's he do? The Bible says he sends you direction. He guides you. Hello? Not only does he guide you, he satisfies you. Can I really, I want you to be, I want you to be loud. How many of you are satisfied with God right where you're at? Why ain't you? Why are you more worried about having all this other stuff than you are having a relationship with God? Don't we know he'll provide? Hey, don't we know he'll provide? Don't we know he can do it? Then why are you allowing your mind to receive it? Think about that. They could have had that breakthrough, Mama Bush, right off the bat when they realized they were in the desert. They could have been thinking, thank you, Lord, for getting me out of this slavery. Thank you for leading me through this. Thank you for getting me over here. You're going to say, they didn't ask for water. Yeah, but they wouldn't have had to. If they were thankful for God getting them out of the mess they couldn't wait to get out of, God would have provided water a lot quicker. He would have gave them direction a lot quicker. So what I'm saying is, don't be like them. Start thanking God now that he's got you out of this mess. Thank God this morning that you ain't going to walk out the same way. Thank God now that your family's back in order, that you got health, that you got the right. You thank him now, he'll make sure you're satisfied the whole time you're in the desert. Hello. Think about these prisoners for a minute. This is number two, the separated prisoner. I'm talking to you that feel like you're lost and alone today. Hello. Psalms 107, 10 through 16. It says, Shuts as set in the darkness, in the shadow of death, being bound by affliction and iron. Come on. Why? Because some of you are just rebels. Come on, let's preach. Because they rebelled against God's words. Okay, Lord, I'll stop right there. Some of you know better than doing what you're doing, but you're still doing it. Hello. Rebelled against God's words and condemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their hearts with what? Labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. But they done the same thing again. They didn't talk to God until the trouble They couldn't be thankful for what they got delivered. You all understanding me? You're all quiet. They couldn't be thankful through the whole journey. They got a spot in their mind where they stopped praising God for bringing them out of slavery. There's a spot in your mind that you stop being thankful to God that he got you off the dope, and that's why you keep going back to it, but he got you off of it again and again and again. It ain't because temptation is too much you had to run back to it. You forgot that you replaced that hunger of dope with the hunger of thanking God. Praising God. Hello. Praising God. Believing in God. Seeking of God. Praying with God. Here they are. Again. Second time in one chapter. 
that their heart broke, they're beat down, they're in darkness. Can we talk about darkness? Some of you are in darkness in your mind. You don't think you'll ever be loved, don't ever care. You don't think you, you can't even feel God no more. Can I be really real? There's three of you here that don't even know if God's real or not, and you know better because you walked in it. You've mingled with everything, tried to find something spiritual. One day you're a Christian, next day you're messing with witchcraft. Well, I was dead on. You believe in God, but it seems like He ain't helping you. Well, I ain't worshiping the other one, but you're doing every sin that He is about. And you can't live for God and go to the church and be faithful and study and read and do this and that. But you'll do every sin that you know that's not of God and you don't think that's praising or thinking the devil. And darkness is all around your mind. I'm on. Where you at this morning? You don't see no way out? It's so bad with some of you. That's your excuse for everything. Got a curse on me. Got a hoobie-jubie spell on me. Hello. I told you before we started. Don't be thinking I'm singling you out. This is what God told me. That's why I ain't answering no one this week. You got an excuse for everything. The devil made me do it. The devil made you what? You got free will. How the devil get involved when he's defeated? See, we forget how many times the devil's been defeated. One time, one good time when God kicked him out of the heavens. Then you're going to say, what's Jesus about? Well, Jesus had to take care of all the fallen angels. Guess what he did? He whooped them too. So if any of them are messing with you, it's because you resurrect them from the dead with your free will. Ain't got nothing to do with God. You forgot whose image you were made in. Darkness, everything's cloudy. Can we really talk? You don't want to be addicted. You don't want to be that way. But it seems like it happens every time you get in an argument. Or it seems like every time something's bad, you do that. You ever notice that sometimes you don't do some things unless you're high? Hello. Let me talk to you now and getting high, people. You ever notice that sometimes everything's good and next thing you know, you got that spirit of anger on you? You just matter and all get out. Form of rich crowd. You just matter and all get out. See, it ain't always about a hoobie doobie and a spell. Sometimes it's just that bad spirit you carry around. Hello. Where you at now? This is where these people are. All of a sudden, they got darkness all around them. Maybe that's you. You can't see the goodness. They're waiting on God to deliver you, but you're so cloudy in your mind, you can't thank Him. You can't believe. You can't praise Him. Think about where these people are. All of a sudden, darkness. Come on, think about that. The shadow of death is all around about them. Then we find out not only, hey, hey, not only is it all around them, but now all of a sudden, they got shackles on. Now they got irons on. Hello? Hello? You come to want to worship to get your breakthrough, but you can't even raise your hand? You want the freedom to dance and to move and to shout, but you can't. There's like 10 of you come to church this morning knowing that you need God and a breakthrough even if you came for somebody else. All right, Lord. But once you got here knowing this is where you need to be, your mind's so cloudy in darkness, dreading what I'm going to preach on, if I'm going to single you out or what God's going to do, that you couldn't even worship when the move it was good. Just then, bunch. Maybe it's the darkness with the lies that are in your mind. You're not good enough, never going to make it, not pretty enough, or no, that I keep hearing this one in my head, so don't get offended, that no one's ever going to love you, and you're never going to have a family, and this is this it, and you're just going to be an old widow. And before you think it's you, there's three of you in here. That darkness plugs you. I got young people in here that darkness is just overtook. Everything that can bring you up, you don't have. But the darkness that you're running with that you think is so cool and so great is bringing you down and destroying your life. Or the loss that's overtook you and the hurt and the family situation is so strong that you want to believe things will change. You even feel God at moments. But the weight of the darkness is just too much. The depression is too heavy. 
What about the rest of you that have anxiety too much, that can't move, can't think? Hello? I told you these four stories hit every one of us. But think about this for a second. The key to this one is the same in the first one. They were never thankful to God until the trouble. Can I dare to say that it's like the church today? I keep hearing that the church is awoke today. I don't think the church is awoke. I think the church has finally realized as a whole, not resonate, all of us, has finally just realized that, oh, the church is in trouble. Let's pray now. The country's in trouble. Let's pray. Oh, your marriage is in trouble. Let's pray. Oh, we're separated. Let's pray. I'm back on drugs. Let's pray. I'm running with the wrong group. Let's pray. Why not praise God saying, thank you, God, for keeping me away from that group. Thank you. Why not praise him before the trouble hits? You'll find out with the children of Israel that everything they went through is when they lost being thankful for what God did. There they are. But once again, everyone say, but God heard their cry. Hello. He heard the cry of the prisoners. And he did what God always does. He delivers them. He brought them out of the darkness and the shallow death, breaking the bands of slender, verse 14. He takes care of them. That's two stories of God's people, you. That's going through the same thing as you. God's delivered, God's healed. You mean you saved? Give me an amen. God bring you out of something big, but now you feel like God ain't around? Or oh, where you at, truth? It's just like the children of Israel. Hey, we're not slaves. I don't know why we're here in the desert. I don't know what God's doing. God's like, I got you in the desert because the only time you ever pray to me is when you're in trouble. I got you in the middle of this mess that you're in that you don't know how you got in, although I gave you free will and you chose it because that's the only time you ever talked to me. In other words, what God's saying, I'm not done yet, I still got two more. The only time you ever talked to me is when in trouble. If you were taught to me before the trouble comes, there wouldn't be no trouble. Hello? Let's talk about the afflicted people. Some sickness. Come on, let's get some sickness so you'll relax with me for a little bit. 17 says, fools because of their transgression. I didn't call you a fool. But if it fits, you're wearing it well. Hello. And because of their what? Their what? Or what? Now listen, old time church and, and the Jews believe that if you do have a form of sickness, it's because you're sinning. That's old school. Let's just talk about old school. I know we're in a new covenant. Come on, I get it. Don't be coming and talk to me later. But some of you got to admit the trouble that you in because of the way you're living. Huh? Hello? Listen to this. Their soul was what? A door of all manner of meat. And they draw nigh into the gates of death. You ever notice in the first two and the third one here, they're all dying? See, it ain't that they're dying physically, they're dying spiritually, and they don't know it. Come on. But here we go. Everyone say, but. I really thought about calling this sermon, but, but I figured someone take it the wrong way. But listen, everyone say, but. They cried out unto the Lord in their what? In their what? When they got to the point that they were at death, can we teach? They had spiritual epilepsy. They should have known when they lost feeling in the tip of their finger. I might need to praise God now. Oh, let's wait until I don't have a hand. Oh, God. Come on. That's you. Why ain't we praising God before the sickness hits? Why ain't we saying, thank you, God, for being my healer? I'm thankful for you taking them stripes out. I'm thanking you for Come on. Where's my church at today? Too real of a sermon? Too real? Why ain't we thinking him so we ain't sick? We're not ever supposed to be sick. He made us in his image. Come on, our forefathers did to be a thousand years old. Sin's been making us die younger and younger for years. But we won't praise him 
and two were dead. I hate to do this, but I got to do it. I have a real close pastor friend that brought me out of a lot of stuff. He's in his 90s. He fell Tuesday. Right? You hear me? He broke his hip Tuesday. Ball joint had to be replaced. Emergency surgery Tuesday. Pastor, one of the great churches I know, sits on the board now that's being a great former pastor. You hear me? None of his kids or pastor, which is his family, told the church or nobody about his accident. No one knew. Surgery went good. Then he had a heart attack right after it. Two days later, they ask everyone, will you pray pastor's sick? What? What's wrong with you? So I got nosy. He's my mentor. What happened? Oh, he had hip surgery. When did he have hip surgery? Uh, Tuesday. Well, thanks for letting me know to pray Tuesday. Uh, when did he have his heart attack? Uh, Wednesday. Oh, thank you for that. Oh, by the way, his dementia kicked up Thursday. What? When did, he, when did dementia kick? Why didn't you tell me about the dementia? Well, we're trying to keep it under wraps. Really? Your dad is probably one of the greatest healers I've ever seen God use, but we're keeping it under wraps. Church is falling apart this morning, and they didn't pray for him because the church didn't know to pray. Why? Because sometimes we get it in our head that we're hiring God instead of praising God for the healing before the rest of the phantoms come. We'll wait to be in trouble so when God bails us out, it looks like a miracle. Great, God still does miracles, but he gave us common sense to avoid the tragedy. Are you hearing me now? Think about this. Here he is, 19. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And out of their what? Distress. In other words, they didn't cry out because they loved God. They cried out to God because they couldn't take no more. And what did he do? He sent his word. He healed them. And now listen, listen. And he delivered them from their, from their, not from the devils, but from their own. Can I preach? Are you with me? You need saved from your own destruction. You're a child of God covered in the anointing, covered by the blood. Can I get an amen? Bible says that can cross the bloodline, so you're doing it in your own destruction. When you're covered in the anointing and the blood, they can't see you. So why are you falling apart? Because you chose your own free will, and now you're in the middle of your own destruction. Read it again. He sent his word to heal them and deliver them from their... Their. He didn't say he delivered them from devil's destruction. Theirs. Think about that. If they'd have praised God, if they'd have worshipped God, if they'd have done everything before it got bad, where you at now, church? It wouldn't have happened. Hello? It wouldn't have happened. Oh, let's just go on. Then he says this. Oh, that the man will praise the Lord. Now listen, listen, listen. He healed them from their own destruction. Then he does that. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his what? And for his wonderful to the children of... Now that tells you something. They wasn't praising God for their goodness until the bad stuff happened. They wasn't praising God until He delivered them. So what were they doing? Doubting that God could deliver them. So God let their willingness make their own destruction so He can show them, I'm a God that will deliver you. Oh, let me do it. Sweet. Remember I said He was the Redeemer? He was the Deliverer? Come on, let's just get to Jesus real quick. That's why He does that sometimes. He lets you mess your own self up so no one else can save you. Can I really preach for a second? Can I just really do it? Your marijuana ain't saved you. Your drug addiction ain't saved you. Your pills ain't saved you. Your anxiety. Come on, somebody. When are you going to realize your life ain't going to turn around until you're sold out to God? Only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can heal you. Only Jesus can save the marriage. Save the... 
that darkness you're in can only be brought to light through. Now, some of you that know me, ain't made me, ain't liking this. You ain't, ain't made me once. You better clean up your lens. Your light ain't showing right now. Truth is, it ain't your wife's fault. It ain't. It's your fault. If you're so close to God, why are you letting how they act predict you and what your relationship is with God? Oh, I can't do it without them. Oh, don't tell me that, buttercup. Sister Pam been doing it for years. Well, I can't do it since the law. Mom, my bush has been doing it ever since. Brother Roy's beating us to heaven. Don't give me no excuse. What are you going to give God? Ah. Uh, God's going to say, depart from me. You're working with me. Like, I don't understand God. And he's going to say simply, you're a worker of And you're going to say, how am I a worker of nifty? Because he's going to say, because you're a worker of excuses. You're a worker of your own free will. Where are you going? This is good. Where are you at? Hey, come on. Listen to this. Check this out. Let's get to 22. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of what? Oh, hold up. Sacrifices of sacrifices of what? Being thankful. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of? Not the sacrifices of atonement for sin. The sacrifices of? Being thankful. It's a sacrifice for you to be thankful. Because that means you got to sacrifice your flesh to be really thankful to God. Because your flesh tells you you deserve it when you don't deserve nothing from God. Are you hearing me? Sacrifice the sacrifices of... That's powerful. And to clear his works with... Not gloom and doom. But with what? Oh, come on. Let me do this. I only got one more. You ain't going to like it neither, but here we go. See, the pain, listen, listen. A painful experience of affliction is there to let you realize that you ain't been thankful for the life that God gave you. You're not, li listen, you're not living the best of everything while you were healthy. And while you were healthy, you wasn't praising God. You were making excuses. And then again, you're like the children of God since Israel. You only pray to him, talk to him when you're in. Hello. I heard my dad do this one time. This couple, at this church, my dad, don't get all excited. They hit you where, it, there we go. They only showed up every once in a while and they'd show up for about a good three weeks. You wouldn't see them for two months. It got so common, Brother Christian, that my dad would be like, you all in trouble again, ain't you? God reveal that to you. I'll never forget that. And, you know, my dad was dramatic. God's like, Dad's like, really? Like, yeah, we really knew God. To, God told you that we were going through something, didn't he? And dad goes, no. Only time you're ever at church is when you're messed up. You mean God didn't tell you that? My dad goes, no, every one of us in the whole church knows the only time you come is when you're at Bark Bottom and you need help. Well, I can't believe you said that. Dad's like, I can't believe you asked me. What do you think about that? And Dad goes, I think you're missing the point. You're getting offended because I told the truth. But really, the story's this. You believe in God so much, but you still want to live like the devil all you want until you can't live that way no more. Then you take advantage of God. Guess what they did? They didn't show up for about two months. But they did come back. Hello. Did they stop coming back and forth? Finally. But the point is this. That's how a lot of us are. Even if you attend every Sunday, don't mean you're really here in the Spirit. Here we go. This is the one I've been waiting on. This is the one I was hoping to preach on and not bring none of the rest of them up. But here we go. You ready? Four. This is good. This is my favorite one. Some of you in your life right now are sailors in a storm. You 
If you read verses 23 to 32, it says it this way. They that go down to the sea in ships, I love this. I just love this. I love this because I really believe this is where a lot of leaders and Christians are that, that, that have a chance to make a difference. I really believe this. Listen to how it's written. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. How many of you feel like you got big responsibilities you're not living up to? That there's more to you. Come on. Or maybe more to your men. Come on. Where you at? I know it's rough today, but come on. Be thankful. Hurry on. 24 says this. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Can I talk to my elders for a minute? And not by age, as some of you that's been serving for a while, maybe been with me for the last three or four years while we got here, and everything was so good getting here. And since we got here, man, COVID was hit, and people's dropped out, and everything looks rough, and maybe you just don't see your... Listen, you, you, you workers that's been in the deep, you've seen God do things that's unbelievable. Come on, somebody. Some of you, how many of you have seen God do some things that you just don't know how he done it? Come on, I'm talking to you right now. I'm done beating the rest of you up for a minute, but I'm coming right back, so don't get too comfortable. But, but... What I'm talking about is the ones, the, the people that went down with their ships in the great waters, knowing that they wasn't just going to always have smooth sailing, that sometimes that the seas are going to get a little rough. But in the middle of that rough journey with God, come on. In the middle of that, come on, I feel like I've been in that sea a lot. In that rough journey, I knew I, I'm going to lose some loved ones. I'm, I'm going to be backstabbed a little bit. I'm, I'm, come on, I'm, I'm going to be in some troubled waters. But that's okay because that's what I knew was going to happen when I hit the sea. And when I know that I'm a captain on the sea, I know I'm going to see God do some deep things, uh, move in some ways that no one else is going to see. That's what he's talking about here. Are you with me? So he says in 25, For he commandeth the rising of the stormy wind. Oh, I like that. I like that. That lets me know that sometimes God puts a little storm and a little wind in my cell to lead me a certain direction. Come on. Which lifted up the waves therefore. They mounted up to heaven. Come on. They go down again in the depths. Oh, I just love that. That just that'd be my I wanted you to preach on this one really bad. And God's like, no, you got you gotta tear them up on the first three. Here we go. But listen, that's how we are sometimes. You're in that boat and sometimes it's like God's ways has got you up where you can see the heavens and everything's beautiful and everything's great you can see him you can smell it and then all of a sudden a storm comes in it's like oh and you're going back down to the desk and you think that your boat's going to capsize or maybe right now it's you this morning because let's just get towards the end you're here this morning and everything i preach kind of a little rough but you got to admit right now you're in a storm and you think you're being overtook right now you remember the times when you're on top of the great wave when you can feel the sun you can feel God. You can feel the presence. And God was moving. But here lately, man, you're just whoo, you're going down fast. You're bailing all the water you can, but the problem is your bucket's got a hole in it. Come on, somebody. Is that you? Well, this is who God's talking about right here. You've been faithful. You believe. But now there's just a storm. And it's shaking everything. See, I don't like flying. I'm kind of scared to be in an airplane because all the great ones die in an airplane. That's why I don't fly. But listen, I'm convinced of who I am in God. Come on, somebody. But I don't like boats. Let me tell you why I don't like boats. It's Grandpa Tom and my dad's fault. We were down at the lake, actually above at the Cumpsy. Grandpa had a long old narrow boat. We were fishing, making me eat canned sardines. I was pitting them on the hook, catching crawl that anyway. And all of a sudden you could tell a storm was coming. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello. And my dad looked at my grandpa and said, Storm coming. We probably need to get in. Right? Tom Driscoll says, We got a little bit. Keep fishing. It starts getting black. Now my grandpa's like, I think we need to head in for the storm. But now my dad's caught four or five more fish. I think you're right. We can hold on a little more. All of a sudden, wind came out of nowhere. And the boat that was, all of a sudden, started going. Right, my pole's up, y'all. I'm done fishing. I'm done messing with that. I've already, cat I already got rid of the sardines. I'm starting to pray to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And I got two elders on each side of me. We're catching fish. We can weather the storm. 
Well, then all of a sudden, rain started coming in sideways. Not rain like this, then sideways. It was like all of a sudden God was like, ha ha, told you to go in. And we're doing this now. And I'm doing this. Little bitty 14 foot boat, probably only three foot wide. Not made to be in the lake in the first place, but we're there. And when the rain started hitting and everything, they said this, I think it's time to go in. And I thought, really? I'll, let's just climb out and get on the bank. Let's get to the solid rock. I got it. I can do it. Okay. I don't have a say. If I pop off, they're going to hit me in the back of the head. Come on. I still think we need to discipline these, but that's another story. Anyway. Grandpa <laughs> starts that motor. Now, the car's that way, or the boat and car, everything's that way. We're facing this way. There's waves that are literally like this. Don't know if you've been in a boat, but you don't want to be sideways. You hear me? But we got to get sideways to go forward, right? Get back to the car. Grandpa gags it. We're running the edge of the bank, going the wrong way. And Dad's like, what are you doing, Tom? I'm fixing to cut across. My dad goes, the rains are too big. Don't do it. Too late. He goes across. Man, wave hits the boat. The rent stuff went out of the boat. I'm soaking wet. Now he hits so hard, it stalled the motor. So now we're like this sideways. Right? Now you would think two men of God would be praying. Hello. But you know what I heard? Tom Driscoll, you stupid. You got us going the wrong way. Don't you talk to me that way, Steve. I've been driving this boat longer than you have. And I'm sitting in the middle like, we're going to die. And you two are yelling at one another. Get the tackle box. Do it. Knocked it out. I'm like, forget the tackle box. Brian, get the tackle box. I'm like, oh, I, I, I. I asked for a life jacket. We didn't have room for it. What in the world? Stop your crying. I don't know. Why you got him crying, Steve? Because you're yelling at me. Oh, it's because you got a sideways in the boat. Probably the first time I ever had southern lips in the Holy Ghost right there. But while they're bickering and yelling at one another, they're trying to, can't start the boat. Uh -uh. My dad, my, you all know my dad, man. He had a gift of healing. But they're not praying. They're letting the best of their mind get to them. They're letting... The waves overtake them. They had options. Let's talk about that. We could have left before the storm came. But oh, hey, oh, oh, let's catch another fish. Hey, hey, you knew the storm was coming when you got invited over there. Or, hey, hey, you knew better than be around them because what they represent. Or, hey, hey, you let them back in when you knew better. Hey, 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 hey. Option number two. When it gets bad, step on the solid rock. Come on, somebody. We were tied to the bank. Why are we leaving? Because they both thought they could handle it. Maybe that's God talking to you this morning. You were tied to the bank. I pitched you on the solid shore. Why didn't you step towards me? Why did you go back into what you can't control? But this time... I'm not listening to none of them. I've got the can of worms, and I threw the worms out, and I'm bailing water. The elders, dad and grandpa, apparently was not worried about the water in the boat. But I got to noticing there was not eight inches on the side no more that it was hitting the rail. And I'm thinking, we dying. And all I'm hearing is, Sure fault. Oh, it's sure fault. Yelled at me. I would have killed it if you wouldn't yelled at me. Shut up. Just start the booming motor. And there's three examples here. One blaming the other one. And then you got a kid in there like, I don't care what's going on. Let's just get out of it. And that's kind of how you are. You're too busy yelling and arguing, griping. thinking you can do it your way that you didn't realize God had you where he wanted you and where you were supposed to be but you thought you could sail across the ocean that's been trying to kill you from day one 
You ever notice you it ain't a new problem that you're fighting, that you're still fighting the same thing? God's got you to the bank, but you're still fighting it. He's got you off the stuff, but you're back on. He's fixed your marriage, but you're back out. He's, hello, finances are good, you're there. He's got you out of being depressed. He got rid of your anxiety. But what'd you do? You didn't get out of the boat, man. You didn't get out of the boat. In other words, you thought, I can get through it. The thing with this story I'm telling you about, if you read this, it talks about them being, you can read it. You get to go through the story and the storm comes, everything looks bad and whatnot. And God then again hears them in their trouble and their distress. He hears them every time. Just like God's heard you every time. Every time. He's heard you. He gets you out of it every time. And you play on that. You know he'll do it. Because God's faithful. But the problem is, you haven't noticed that it takes you longer and longer to get to the bank. And you're not promised tomorrow. So here's how I'm going to end. And it's going to be with me back in the boat. They were too busy yelling at one another. You're going to kill us, Tom. Shut up, Steve. That's the first time I ever talked back in the point that I thought we were going to die. And I yelled, shut up. And you know what they both did at the same time? You can't tell us to shut up. I said, shut up. We're going to drown. And they both looked at me. And Grandpa was like, are you going to whoop him or am I going to whoop him? And tears came in my eye. I'm scared. And Grandpa looked down. Dad shut up. And the next crank, boom, motor started. My dad took the worm bucket and started bailing water. Grandpa told me to take the mineral bucket part. I started bailing water, and it was quiet all the way back to the boat dock. They backed the truck down. They loaded it up, got flat, and they looked in the boat and was like, well, we about sink, didn't we? Duh. Well, that's the only time I ever mouthed back that I didn't get in trouble. Because someone had to get their attention to realize they were fixing to die. I said it this way because you get mad at me when I preach and you don't come back sometimes. Because you think I either know or I know this or that. No, I'm the one that God's pitting your boat to yell at you to say, Stop it! You're about to capsize. Everything you've tried has not worked. Stop. Stop. I've been your pastor long enough now that I've seen every one of you go through these four storms at least twice. And yes, God always bells you out. But there's coming a day he might not. And you're going to miss it because you wasn't thankful. Yes, everybody wants something better. But you can't be better until you're happy with where you got out of What it? Why are you running back to being a slave? Why are you running back to your darkness where you feel alone? Why? He bells you out every time. He's used some of the greatest ministers you've ever had to tell you, Get out! Stop it! So we don't do this to beat you up or because we might know if you stop sharing everything on Facebook, none of us would know. But this morning, you're going through one of these four, at least twice. Amen? Don't you know how to make it stop? This ain't new people here. I've already, I've already looked it over. Have you not been, some of you, come on, I ain't seen you in a while. Let's be real. So you're here because you know God can do it. Can I get an amen? Get out on the bank. 
you don't have as much control in the life that you're living as you think, get out. God's got you to the bank today. Right here, right now, is your moment to be thankful that God got you back to the loading dock. Get out! Be thankful that you're just out. Yeah, you might have some uh, coincidences or circumstances that's tagged into the mess that you're in. Come on. But you're out! Be thankful that you're out and that he loves you, that he hears you. Yes, there's side effects of being stupid. That offended somebody. There is side effects to everything. You can't take a medicine for a headache that don't give you a diarrhea. Oh. <laughs> then you take another medicine to get over the diarrhea and then you read it. Side effect, headache. What in the world? Right? Are you with me? Hang on with me. Hang on, I'm done. But we know now, being real with you, I'm the one in your boat right now. Love me, hate me, whatever. You'll come back around when you need me. That's part of pastoring. I love you. Don't have no problem with that. I don't. I am made for that. But get out of the boat. You ain't, you, you, ain't, you ain't done good in that storm from the day I met you. And some of you, I've known longer than I've been pastor. Get out of the boat. You want a better life? You want a different life? Only one cornbread? <laughs> you want a different life? You want things to be better? Get out of the boat. How's it going to be any better if you're still in the same crap? Oops, sorry, elders, sorry, sorry. Same mess that you're in. How's it going to be getting any better? Hello? If it, if it, it still stinks, why are you in the outhouse? I know, I told you it's going to be real. So let's be real for a second. Right now. Right now. God said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. You wouldn't pit no more on you than you can handle. So if it's more than you can handle, you're pitting it on you and it ain't from God. He said he'll never leave you, although you wandered off and went across the <laughs> went across the lake in the middle of a storm. Come on, somebody. He even hears you and you're not even talking to him. And I can hear you right now. I got three of you saying, but I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's be real. Everything that you've done has got you where you were. The way to be a Christian is don't do nothing but let God have it all. And it starts being, with being thankful that he got you. You ready? To this spot, at this place, on this Sunday, right here. Why? Is it because resonate is special? No, stop making stuff that ain't been said. It's because God loved you enough that this is the first time you've been here. Or this is the day that the sermon actually hits you and you're going to accept it. Be thankful. You're thankful of him today and ask him to bail you out. What's he do? Every time that the children of Israel asked in their troubles and in their distress and in their own destruction, what did God do? He what? He did what? Ain't it weird that God bails us out all the time, but we bail out on God? But again, let's get back to where I was. I had you here until I did that one. He bails them out what? So why not let today be that day? No, it won't be no different. How you know the day ain't the day that this is your last day? Hi everyone, I'm Corbin Chris Heineken, the Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters and host of Rest Day Excel. I want to say a special thank you for reasoning to amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you join us live here at Rest Day Church, whether you're joining us nationwide courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you join us internationally and globally, courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for resonating Jesus with us. Now, you're asking and you're saying, Corporate, 
you know, resonate. No, you guys always bless us. But we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Like, yes, we are. Multiple ways, form in particular, on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one, join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at a brand new location. 3702 East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wednesday nights at 6.30 and we do keep in mind, things scheduled subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little timely thing right there. Use the term Resonate Church AR. That's right. Everything right there on the screen. Resonate Church AR if you want to resonate your giving online. Just follow the directions and you can do that safely and securely. Option three, the cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What resonate you're giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mail it. If you want to mail your contributions to us, courtesy of a check or money order, please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, if you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option, send your check or money order. Make all checks and money orders payable to Resonate Church and send it to that address on your screen. And those are the ways you can resonate your giving. And remember, show love, your peace, and say Jesus. <laughs> what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Pastor, ooh, what are you watching right here in the month? Pastor, your awesome job. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you. Ooh, you know, I know some people have their specific groups, musical groups, that kind of quote unquote speak to them. I I'm one of those individuals that's a little bit off the wall, if not way off the wall. And there's a group out there. I mean, there's 311, which is the reggae rock group. And then the flip side of it is PAX 217. Well, I'm going to go to the PAX 217 route. And it says, and, and, and they came up with a song called Gratitude. Got it, got it, get it, get it, get it, gratitude. Whoa, I just, God, I just sing a simple song for you. I'm grateful. You know, Hezekiah Walker had a song, did a song called Grateful. Now, God, I'm grateful for everything that you've done. It has nothing to do with my emotions. It has nothing. Yeah, yes, I know. I, I have been redeemed, and I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But God, this has nothing about me. It has nothing to do with me being redeemed. God, this has everything to do with me being great, being grateful for everything that you've done. But God, I'm grateful for who you are. Maybe that's what you need to start telling God. It's always great that God does great things for you. That God is a provider. That God is a protector. That bottom line, he shelters you. He takes care of you. He's the ultimate mother when you need him. He's the ultimate father when you need him. But I'm not, he's, he's just closer to him. He's a friend that sits closer than a brother. Get your praise on, y'all. Be grateful. Have some gratitude for who God is. And God is all that and so much more. Oh, Donnie McClurkin sang a song. I call you faithful. But he has so many names for God. I call you faithful. Faithful you are to me. God. I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. 
You've been awesome to me. But then here's here's the part that literally sums up everything when it comes to God. And this is the part that says, God, I call you all that. Your name is all that. You have been all that to me. God, I call you all that. Your name is all that. All that you are and then all that you'll be. Please look it up. Donnie McClurkin. I'll call you a favor. But in this case, God, I call you all that. Because God, you've been all that to me. Even the times that I slipped up, God, I ain't focused on my slip ups. I'm focusing on who you are as an awesome, amazing God. That's what we need to start telling God. Great. It's always good to tell God your problems. It's always good to tell God how you feel. But have you ever thought once in a while and just start telling God that God, I'm so grateful for you being all that to me. God, I got gratitude. I am redeemed. I got gratitude. God, let my gratitude for your awesomeness overflows. God, let the gratitude that I have for you not only overflow, but spreads everywhere. Try that, will you? God, thank you so much for resonating your sound. Thank you at home for watching. And God, thank you for being all that to us. Hey. Ain't no service like a live rest day service because a live rest day service don't stop. Join us right here live and then resonate and follow on the screen. Plus, four ways you resonate, you give me. Resonatechurchjonesworld.com. That's the other option. And all the pictures, news, scoops, views, info, so much more. Facebook.com forward slash resonate church Jones world. And you watch this program on YouTube, Simon Gas, like video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. Ding ding ding. That way you ain't missing anything. And guess what, folks? We celebrate three years next week. Join us, will you? It's oh, our three-year anniversary. Oh yeah, and we have a returning guest and some returning co-hosts with me. Join us, will you? For our entire crew, I'm Chris Heineken. We say to you, show up, give peace to the Lord, resonate Jesus. We celebrate three years of resonate the sound television before we head into our new season. We celebrate three years this Thursday night. Join us, invite everybody you can, and make sure that you are tuned in watching. 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube Worldwide, and 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on this station. Have a, all we can say is thanks for watching. So love, give peace, resonate, Jesus. See you Thursday night in our three-year anniversary. Good night, Canada. Good night, everyone. We celebrate three years this Thursday. Don't miss it. Neither death nor grave